Recently, I was playing Final Fantasy Rebirth, cruising around under Junon, and some of these crowds caught my eye. I was thinking to myself, you know, these are AAA crowds. Final Fantasy Rebirth, this is one of the biggest games ever produced, millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, and this is the AAA crowd that's in the game, right? And it's a great crowd. But I do think this is something that is totally achievable for someone using Rococo or a similar mocap system to create a crowd that is at this level. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down how to create one of these crowd sequences using your Rococo mocap or really any other type of mocap too. Let's jump into it and try and create one of these crowds real quick. Okay, so we're going to start in Rococo Studio, of course, and here I have a about a minute long mocap recording I did in my SmartSuit Pro 2, my smart gloves, and using facial motion capture because we want some facial mocap in this loop as well. Normally I do shorter clips, like 20 seconds long, but I did a little bit longer here because I'm going to pull multiple loops out of this single animation. As you can see here, we have maybe this is a loop right here, this part. And that will be a loop and then we'll get a third one out of the end. Now one of the most important things I've found when making loops like this is just being cognizant of where your feet are at the beginning and at the end of your loop, right? Because when you blend the end back into the beginning, you want your feet to already be kind of in the same position, otherwise you're gonna get a very unnatural blending. It's okay with the arms because we move our arms like that sometimes, but with our feet, we don't move our feet without picking them up off the ground. So right here, for instance, you can see that I was trying to stay facing the same direction the entire time, but in this step, when I step back, I'm now facing more off to the left. So I can no longer really blend anything from here to here because you're gonna get this weird rotation. We'll still get a bunch of good loops out of this, but it's just something to be aware of when you're doing your recording. So I've gone through and I've done my foot cleanup. Always do your foot cleanup for anything you make in Rococo Studio, right? It just takes 30 seconds and just clean up your keyframes. Make sure that your foot contacts are good. And after that, I wanna export out. So I'm just gonna rename my clip to crowd loop. Because we're going to Unreal, I'm just gonna use the preset for Unreal Engine 5 Newton. Click that at 24 FPS, and then I'll hit export. So we exported our mocap, and now I'm in an Unreal Engine 5.5 project here. And I'm gonna be using Unreal Engine to make these little loopable clips, but you could use Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya. The process is essentially the same in all of them. How we're gonna clip this out, I'm just using Unreal. So you can still follow along if you're in one of those programs. So I'm gonna delete all these materials just cause I don't want them in here. And then if we open up our animation, and so we have everything in here, uh, even our facial animation, even though it's not really showing up on this uh, mesh, it's, it's still here as you can see. So in order to turn this into individual loops, what we're gonna do is go and grab our skeletal mesh, and I'm just gonna create a new level sequence, we'll call this loops. I will add in my mesh here, and then I will change the FPS to 24 and add our animation. And now if I double click the track, we have our entire animation. And it's in this nice little track here that we can move around and we can split and we can start looping up. So in order to create our first loop, what I'm gonna do is select an in point here. So let's say we're gonna do from right here with my arms like this, my feet here, and we're gonna loop that all the way to up oh, right here. So the same position pretty much. So this is gonna this is gonna work well. So and I'm just gonna give this as much space as I can. And then at this point, I'm gonna right click, edit, split section. Same thing at the beginning, where I want where I want my end to be, right here. Edit, split section. I can delete the beginning and I can move this little bit that we're gonna use for our other loops. But here I can copy this. So if we take this copy and we just drag it in, we can zoom in a little bit here, we can turn off our magnet snapping. We just drag it in. You can see that we get this blending. And that seems a little abrupt, so I'll just make it a longer blend, even longer. There we go. Looks nice and natural now. What we can do is basically, we wanna go beyond where this blend is. So let's say right here. And then on this side, we wanna to go to right about 
here. And now we can just start playing around and you'll see it's gonna be pretty obvious when we get closer to making the loop. So right here you can see this is a little bit too late. That's a little bit too early. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Turn our snapping back on maybe. And there we go, look, it's perfect. So just by kind of, you know, guessing and, and kind of moving the in and out points around a little bit, you can get that perfect loop. And what I like to do is actually cover the screen so I can't see when the loop happens and I can just look at the character and see if it's smooth. But this, this looks great, right? And this is now a perfect loop from in to out. It will loop over and over and over again. So at this point, what we can do in order to have this loop uh, and use it on other characters, we go to right click on our character here and we go to bake animation sequence. And I'm going to throw this right in my mocap folder. I'm going to call this uh, loop 01 because we're going to do three of them. And we're going to export it. And remember, it's going to do the in and the out point on our timeline. And that means that we can go and we can move these in and out points and go do our second loop. And if we go and open up loop 01, what we just exported, you can see we still have our facial animation and everything is just looping. We go to the end. Look at that smooth loop. Whew, looks good. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing for the second and third loops, and then we'll put it on, put these loops on some characters. Okay, there we go. So done for all three of my loops. I've got three looping animations here. We go to the end. You can see, yep, it loops right through. And if we go and just retarget one of these right off the bat, Let's choose loop 03 and let's choose a character with facial blend shape. So we get that sweet facial animation on there too. Without helmet, loop 03, we'll export the, uh, actually we're gonna export the animations just right into our mocap folder. And then I can just drag this right into my scene and select my character. Make sure that under animation, looping is selected. And now whenever I hit play, we are going to get this looping character. And there we go. That's it. And let's say we need another one of these. Let's copy him. Let's add, move him over and let's change the initial position. So now when we hit play, We've got two looping characters that were both pulled. This is the same loop, it's just offset slightly. And you can imagine once we start, you know, adding in some of the other loops with some other characters, let's go and retarget this one to one of the other characters. Let's say this Cyberpunk Girl D. We'll do loop two on this one. Let's export the animations out to mocap. There we go. Drag her into the scene change her initial position, make a copy of her, change this initial position. And before you know it, we have got this crowd happening of protesters or whatever it is, just like in our Final Fantasy game. And this is just gonna run, right, infinitely, right? These are all looping animations. So I never need to worry about these characters. And this is all done on a single loop. So here I've just got a little <laughs> scene in the Unreal Engine first person blueprint. You know, just trying to recreate our Final Fantasy scene here. And I've also got a metahuman. So what if I wanna get this onto a metahuman? Well, in this case, this metahuman is just rocking a female, tall, normal weight body. So what I did is I went ahead and I retargeted one of our loops to, if we search for it, it looks really weird, but with female, tall, normal. So it's this weird kind of, you know, very bizarre looking mesh right here, but we retarget to this. And then I drag my metahuman, this is a metahuman with some fancy clothes on, but drag my metahuman into the scene, select the body, and then instead of blueprint, select asset, make sure that the, you know, loop asset is selected, loop 06, here we go. And it's gonna work just great, make her, a little bit taller, make a couple copies of her, same thing. There we go. And we'll just change the body initial position timing. And if we hit play again, grab our gun. 
<gasps> Look, we've even got this metahuman here with facial animation, looping, all working really well. There you go. You know, this is something that I literally did in less than an hour, way less than an hour, right? Jumping in the suit, making mocap, that was five minutes. And then setting all this up is really easy now. Um, so when I think about AAA games and when I get intimidated by quality that I see, you know, whether it's in the indie sphere that's just really high quality or, or whether it's like Marvel and I'm like, oh my God, I'll never be able to do that. I think that, you know, we really can. And some of these tools and resources now, you know, allow you to really create things at that ultimate high level, right? And so I think when you're looking around games like Final Fantasy games that are at the peak of the industry, you know, you can start to see where a lot of this stuff is accessible at the same level. And I think that it's perfectly possible for anyone to create you know crowd characters at the same level of any of those AAA studios with a lot of the tech that we have you don't have to use rococo you can use other free tools if you want but if you have access to rococo you know it's really easy to get that going as well that is a pretty easy way to jump into your suit make a fully fleshed out crowd with facial motion capture um, you know, in under an hour using Rococo. One thing I will say about loops generally is I tend to not find them with facial motion capture. And depending on what you're doing, it can be really nice to have facial motion capture included in the loop. So that is really cool that we can do that with Rococo, right? We can jump in, use our iPhone that's already in our pocket and record facial motion capture that's gonna be embedded into that loop that's gonna work with all of our looped characters and any character that's set up for facial motion capture. So I think that that is a real advantage over just, hey, grab an animation from Mixamo and loop it, it'll be fine. This is how you get that extra level of specialness, that AAA level, I think. You know, this takes it up there. So there you go, that was the video. We hope that you found it helpful and interesting. Put any questions you have down in the comments below as always, and I will see you on the next video. Have fun creating crowds.